Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can add drop shadow to a text plus element inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So for a regular text element, we would simply drag in the text component over here, go over to the inspector with it selected, and come down here for drop shadow where we can set up uh, basically whatever kind of shadow we want. So you can change the offset and then you get a little bit of shadow in the backdrop. If we wanted to show below, we would use a negative Y. However, to do it with a text plus element is a little bit more tricky. However, as things are currently, doing it with a text plus element is a little bit less obvious. So I'm going to drag in this new text plus, which is new to DaVinci Resolve 15. And now with this text element, we look at the inspector once again. You can see on the text tab that the drop shadow is actually missing now. So what we need to do is go over to the fourth tab for the fusion tab for the text plus, and there'll be something called shading elements. So the shading element that we want to select and enable by default is actually shading three. So you'll see here it's called, so you'll see here it's got the name black shadow. Well, once we enable that, we're going to get a drop shadow behind our text. So now similarly to the text element, we actually get the ability to customize this. And we have a few more options than before. You can choose to change the text shadow to uh, outline if you wish. We can control the opacity of that shadow when you want it to be more or less visible. We can change the solid black background from a single color to a gradient if we desire. Having it transition its colors over time and you can customize that in the shading gradient area down here. So for instance, if I wanted more of the gradient to be white rather than black, I can adjust these positions as such. You can also left click on the little arrows and change the color so that your gradient is a different color if you don't want it to be black. Likewise, if we go over to solid, we can change the color just as easily, except it will apply to all of the shadow areas. Usually people will leave it as black. If you find this shadow to be too blurry, you can tone down the softness. So I'm going to drop this down here and we can also lower the Y softness. So if you bring it to zero, it becomes more like an exact copy of the text, but behind it and in a different color. But if we raise the softness way up, it's going to get more and more blurry. We can also adjust the position of the text. So if I want to bring it from the right side over to the left, then I want to change the X offset to a negative number. So we could do negative 0.5 instead. And now you can see that the shadow falls on the left side rather than the right side. You can also rotate these text elements. So if for some reason you want the shadow to show up on a different position, maybe you're doing some kind of little animation here with the keyframes, you have the option to that and you can rotate it on any axis. And with shear, if you want it to slant to the side or slant up and down to one side, then you can raise or lower the X, Y shear over here. Just move the mouse if for some reason it disappears for a split second. And yeah, just by playing around with these, you can pretty much get whatever kind of shadows you want to occur. So that in a nutshell is how you do drop shadow on a text plus element inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. Hopefully this helps you guys out. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve content.